In our chapters on solving elliptic and parabolic partial differential equations using finite difference methods, we were focusing on a single PDE at a time. But as you've seen in the last few videos for computational fluid dynamics, we have the Navier-Stokes equations, whether in primitive variables formulation or vorticity stream function formulation or conservation form, we have multiple partial differential equations that need to be solved in a coupled fashion. So there's a couple different ways to do that. We're going to go over that in this video. So think back to the primitive variables formulation just in two dimensions as an example. So we had two convection diffusion equations and one Poisson equation for pressure. In the vorticity stream function formulation, we had one convection diffusion equation and one Poisson equation for the stream function. So in either case, we have these coupled equations of different forms. So the question is, how do we solve these equations in a way that is faithful to the coupled nature of the physics and the mathematics? Well, there's two basic approaches. There's the sequential solution approach. It's the most common approach and the easiest one to implement. And then there's also a simultaneous or a coupled solution technique. As the name would suggest, the numerical coupling is going to parallel the mathematical coupling of the equations. But first, let's talk about the sequential approach, which is the most common. So essentially, we just solve each equation one by one in a sequential fashion during each iteration. So we're going to solve which generally means iterate on each equation for its dominant variable. Remember, there are a couple equations because all the variables appear in all of the equations. But each equation has a dominant variable. So the x momentum equation in the primitive variables formulation, the dominant variable is the u velocity. Then there's the v velocity. And then there's the pressure in the pressure Poisson equation. Similarly, in the vorticity stream function formulation, the convection diffusion equation is for vorticity and the Poisson equation is for the stream function. Although the other variables appear in each of the other equations, they do have a clear dominant variable. So you solve numerically for that dominant variable, assuming that you know what the other variables are, which simply means that you use the most recently obtained information that you have in the iterative process. This requires one pass through the mesh for each equation at each iteration. So I'll sketch a diagram of this in a moment to make this more clear. And then you iterate until convergence at each time step if it's unsteady, or you just keep iterating until you get a converged solution in the steady case. Again, this is the most common, and it's the easiest to implement for reasons that I'll discuss in a moment. Now, the simultaneous solution procedure is where you take the discretized equations, so the finite difference equations themselves, and you combine them into a coupled form. So you have a single system of equations for all of the variables rather than multiple systems of equations for each of the equations. So just as an example, if we had capital N dependent variables, so that would be three in the 2D primitive variables formulation, that would be two in the vorticity stream function formulation, then that would produce an N by N block tridiagonal system of equations that we could then solve. And when we do so, we are getting all of the dependent variables all at once. So it's just one big system of algebraic equations that we're solving for all of the dependent variables rather than sequentially solving for dependent variables one by one. So let's just think about this in a very simple way. If we were to use gauss seidel to solve coupled elliptic partial differential equations, in the sequential approach, we would have one gauss seidel expression. Remember, there are those explicit expressions that we iterate on over and over again, we would have one of those expressions for each of the dependent variables, and we would update the entire grid in succession. So the entire grid for u, then v, and then p. And then we would start the iteration over again, u, v, and p. In the simultaneous approach, we're going to solve an n by n equation of unknowns for all the dependent variables directly at each grid point. The sequential method, as I said, is the most common, and there's a very practical reason for that. Even though the partial differential equations are mathematically coupled together, numerically there are some practical reasons why it makes sense to not actually couple them. So the main reason why it's easier to implement the sequential method is because you can take existing codes that we developed, for example, for elliptic PDEs and parabolic PDEs, and just simply patch them together. So if you have a modular function that solves a convection diffusion equation using your favorite elliptic or parabolic technique, then you can just take that 
without changing it at all. That's a module, for example, that would solve the vorticity transport equation, which is a convection diffusion equation in that formulation. Then you take your favorite elliptic solver for Poisson equations. Did I say something wrong? And then for your Poisson equation for the stream function, you use your favorite Poisson equation solver. Again, just take that module, take that function, and patch it together. And then you just wrap all that within your iterative loop. If some equations are elliptic, some are parabolic, that's fine. Again, you just incorporate this all into the same loop. Again, I'll show this schematically in a moment. The other nice thing about this is that it's very straightforward to incorporate additional physics. So if I want to add heat transfer into my CFD solver, I just have another PDE, the energy equation, which looks very similar to the convection diffusion equations we've been discussing. And I just patch in another module that takes care of that equation and add that into my iterative loop. I don't have to change anything about the other modules that solve the other equations. So that's another practical reason why this is straightforward to implement. Now, as you might guess, however, the coupled approach does have the potential to be faster. In other words, require fewer iterations to get convergence. So that's the trade-off. There's the practical issues that we've emphasized versus the potential to be much faster in a coupled fashion. But then you lose some of these other advantages. Okay, so let's look at the sequential approach in more detail. Think in your mind of the primitive variables formulation. So we're solving for u, v, and p. Because of the nonlinearity, it's likely that we'd have to implement under relaxation as well. So let's schematically draw the algorithm to solve for u, v, and p sequentially. So we start with our initial guess, as we do for all iteration techniques. In this case, we'll have initial guesses for u, v, and p. Again, we're thinking in terms of solving the primitive variables formulation here. It would be the same approach, just a different set of equations for the vorticity stream function formulation. Now remember, it's steady, so nothing is changing with time. We're just iterating until it converges. And then we would go into the iteration process. So first, we might update u. And we would do that using our x-momentum equation. Once we've updated u, we would update v. And that's using the y-momentum equation. And then once we're done with u and v, we would solve the pressure Poisson equation. So update p. using pressure plus on. All right, so two convection diffusion equations and one pressure plus on equation, but all the equations are elliptic. Once we've updated all three variables, u, v, and p, sequentially using each of their solvers, we would then have a decision. So then we would ask, are u, v, and p converged? So we'd have a convergence test for all three. If the answer is yes, then we're done. If the answer is no, then we would proceed to go back up and iterate. So that's how it proceeds. Initial guess, and then we go into the iteration so for u, x momentum, v, y momentum, p, pressure plus on, we ask if all three are converged. If the answer is no, we go back up to the beginning of the iteration and we solve them again, updating u, v, and p. And we just keep doing that sequentially over and over again until it has converged. Once it's converged, then we're done. We go out the bottom. Now, in this case, all three of these are elliptic equations. Okay, so these are all elliptic because it's steady. The Poisson equation, even in an unsteady context, is always elliptic. And then the convection diffusion equations are elliptic if they're steady and, and parabolic if they're unsteady. So we can use our, our favorite solver for elliptic equations. We could use Gauss-Seidel. 
we could use ADI, for example. We could use multi-grid. We could use a direct method if we have one and so forth. So whatever technique we want to use to solve the elliptic equation. Now the other thing you can do here is these two equations are very similar, whereas this one, the pressure plus on equation, is quite different. These two are nonlinear, this one's linear, uh, convection diffusion, Poisson, and so forth. So they're, they're quite different, and they have a different character. So it's possible that you could speed up the iteration process by doing more iterations on one of these equations. For example, it turns out, this is counterintuitive actually, that when you do these calculations and if you track how much time is spent in each of these solvers, it turns out that most of the time is spent on the Poisson equation. Again, that's counterintuitive. It's the simpler equation. It's linear versus the other ones being nonlinear. But in practice, that turns out to be the case. So you might want to try iterating on the pressure Poisson equation or the Poisson equation for string function more times per iteration than you do on the other variables. And that's, it's possible that that will speed up the entire iterative process. The only way to determine that is by trial and error. Uh, but anyway, I just want to alert you to the fact that that might be the case. OK, now let's look at an unsteady problem. So now that we have an unsteady problem, we will have initial conditions on the dependent variables rather than initial guesses. So initial conditions for u, v, and p at t is equal to 0. Then you increment time, so t plus delta t. And then you go into the iterative process whereby we update u. Again, that would be using the x-momentum equation, update v using the y-momentum equation. And then finally, update P using the pressure plus on equation. Then we ask ourselves again, are U, V, and P converged? But now we're asking at T plus delta T. And that's now the decision that we have to make. It's a test. If the answer is no, then we come out here, and we go back up, and we iterate again. If the answer is yes, then we come out the bottom, and we go all the way up, and we increment the time step. So now this is the iterative portion here. We update u, v, and p at the current time step, test for convergence at that time step. Once it's converged, then you advance to the next time step and do that iteration again. So remember, we have to embed the iteration inside the time step. So advance the time step, iterate on all the equations sequentially until it's converged. Once it has converged, then go back up and advance time. Now in the unsteady context, these two equations are parabolic. while this equation is elliptic. We're solving a parabolic equation. We could use explicit methods. We could use implicit methods. We talked about uh, Crank-Nicholson. We talked about the uh, factor at ADI, and so on. So any of those methods. And then elliptic, again, we're back to Gauss-Seidel, ADI, multi-grid, direct, and so forth. OK? So you just pull in whichever modules you need for solving the steady, unsteady convection diffusion equations in the elliptic Poisson equation as necessary. So let me just finish with a couple comments about the unsteady process here. So again, the outer loop takes care of the time marching, and then the inner loop is used to obtain the solution, the coupled equations at each current time step, but again, using this sequential approach for each equation at a given time step. Now there is a trade-off. You have these two loops, the time marching 
as well as the iteration loop inside of it. So if you reduce delta t, that would reduce the number of iterations required in the inner loop. So the rule of thumb I use is if my number of iterations per time step is getting close to 20, then I start to consider whether I should reduce my delta t. And by reducing the delta t, therefore reducing the number of iterations. So it's a nice diagnostic, so you're not taking such a big step that you need lots of iterations for it to converge at that iteration. So that's a little knob you can turn, and it's also a good diagnostic. All right, so now you can do problem set four. And if you want to see what problem set four is, well, you have to take my class here at the Illinois Institute of Technology. There's the plug.